Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of my Pokemon Battle series, The School of Hard Knocks. So throughout this episode, like every other, we'll be jumping on to the Pokemon Global Link Battle Spot Ladder, playing under the Championship Battle Rules, which are the equivalent rule set of the VGC 2017 season. So we kicked off this week with the team you can see on the screen art down below, which is my good friend Terence Dres. Um, team that he's been running throughout this season, made up of the Tapu Koko, the Trevenant, Gyarados, Alola Marowak, Alola Muck, and Politoed. So we had a bit of a disaster on Monday's episode. Let's not beat around the bush with that. It wasn't good at all. Um, I'm going to kind of put a lot of it down to I wasn't feeling great, but that's no excuse. You know, that really transitioned through the players that I made um, in that episode. Um, and thanks as well, guys, because I tried to, to kind of make something of the players and the games that we had in that game by saying, you know, Pokemon isn't um, all, all, you know, fun and roses. You do lose sometimes. And, you know, sometimes the, I think the main important point that I tried to get across at the end of that episode was that, you know, sometimes you do have off days. Sometimes things don't go your way. Um, and sometimes you're just not on point. So um, you've got to kind of keep that in mind. And it's not um, always a good thing to just have a few games or have a bit of a losing streak and throw a team away. You know, sometimes it does take a bit of adjusting too. You've got to learn how it operates and things like that. And some of the better teams that you see um, come out from these good competitive VGC players and um, they they aren't as easy just to pick up and just play and just go into games and get results with you've got to be able to know um, how the team was kind of um, conceived and what the different players are against different teams and how um, you kind of set up against that so yeah that just wanted to kind of make that um, and throw that out there for you guys to know um, but on that note I have spoken to Terence since, had an interesting conversation with him, and we should be a bit better set up going into today's episode. I'm really looking forward to getting him on the channel here on Friday to play the team with us, to explain a bit about the team, how his season's gone, and also just to give us a bit of insight to him as a person and a VGC player, because he's an absolutely great guy, and he is fighting his way for that world to invite this year. So it'll be great to hear from him and it'll be great for you guys to kind of have him on the channel. And you know, like we had Ben on, have a different take on VGC um, and just see how another player kind of adapts to the meta game, a new meta game, new format, and kind of conceives these ideas with team building and things like that. It's just a different perspective to look at. Other news as well, guys. So I am currently watching the E3 um, Nintendo uh, live stream at the moment. Um, I've got it on here. It's a little bit distracting, um, but I have got it on mute. I hope you guys did see it. If you haven't, you've probably already heard the news, but the news was dropped that they are designing and developing Game Freak or developing a Pokemon game, RPG game for the Nintendo Switch, which is pretty cool. So whether it'll be like a Pokemon Coliseum or a Girls of Darkness or it'll be um, something along the lines of a main title series, which is something I really hope they do. I think it would be amazing to get something like that on Nintendo Switch. Um, it would really open up um, the possibilities of Pokemon, how we know it, um, and take it away from the handheld devices. Although, you know, there's a part of me, I've always played Pokemon games on a handheld device, so there's a little part of me that doesn't want it to ever move away from that. But all good things have to come to an end and we'll see what happens. We don't know much information yet. They said it'll be over a year before we probably see anything or hear anything. And in the meantime, we can all get excited for Pokemon Ultra Moon and Ultra Sun, which I'm super hyped about. I can't wait. Um, so hopefully we get some more news on that soon as well. And if we do, I'll mention it and we can chat about it and everything like that. But on to today's episode, because we've got some more pressing things at hand. We need to try and redeem ourselves um, and get some good results before we get Terence on the channel. So today is the kind of, it's like Judgment Day, Terminator 2 style where we need to get some results. So hopefully we find some good opponents, have some really good games for you guys, and provide some good content 
good watching. Um, I hope you guys as well have also caught up now with um, Team Leaky's week four match against Team Cyberbars. If you haven't, do go and check it out. I'm not going to leave any spoilers in this video. You need to go and watch it. it was, uh, I think it was well worth the wait. And uh, for you guys out there that have already commented and shown support for us, thank you so much. It is really appreciated. And hopefully as the weeks go on and we kind of hopefully keep doing well, then um, that support will grow. So... Team Leaky for the win. But we have our first opponent of the day, and they are running a team of Golduck, Pelipper, Alola Muck, Magnazon, Gastrodon, and Mimikyu. Interesting to see um, a Gastrodon in a rain core. So it kind of indicates that we might see possibly Surf from the Golduck to boost, self boost the, the Gastrodon. Um, there's definitely a Trick Room mode in the team with that Mimikyu, the Muck, uh, the Magnazon and the Gastrodon. And you go fast mode with that rain call there. So um, what are we gonna do? I do, I do, I do, I do. I think Tapu Koko is obviously really nice here. We do need to be careful with that Magnazon. We're gonna boost up the electric type attacks um, just by bringing the Tapu Koko, the electric terrain. Hmm, let's think what we can do. I think I'm gonna lead off Tapu Koko and um, could bring Trevenant, although Muck is gonna be a bit of a pain. Muck is gonna be a big pain in this match, so I'm gonna to wanna to bring my own Muck. Let's go Trevenant, let's go Marowak, and let's go Muck. Marowak might not be the best here, but I do want it just to support us against that uh, Magnazon. I did learn as well that the Pelop uh, the Trevenant can take a uh, Hurricane from a Pelpa and the Tapu Koko, because it's a Salt Vest on this team, can take a Hydro Vortex from a Golduck in the rain. So that gives us a bit better information, especially against like lining up against this sort of team. So we've got the option here if we want to, to go for a Volt Switch, possibly with the Tapu Koko and a Trick Room with our Trevenant. Trevenant um, and then bring something like Muck in, possibly. So what are we going to see my opponent go for here? I think my opponent probably says expects a Trick Room from that Trevenant. So they could double into that slot. Um, but that would mean that Tapu Koko gets a free, a free turn here. So, hmm. I really want to Volt Switch into the... Hmm. To the Pelipper maybe. Because we could see Tailwind possibly come out. It's not likely though if my opponent does expect the, the Trick Room here. So I'm going to just, I think because of that, I'm going to just Volt Switch into the Golduck and I'm going to go for a Trick Room with Trevenant. And let's see what my opponent goes for. So there's the Trevenant withdrawing and the Muck coming in. Okay. We do have Willow Wisp on our Trevenant. Okay, that's... Okay, it's not too bad. Okay, so my opponent protecting the Golduck there. We do get the Trick Room off. Um, so... It's whether or not this Trevenant is slower than the Muck. And I don't know because... Hmm... We possibly are. I'm going to go on the presumption that we are slower than the max. So I'm just going to Volt Switch out again with my Tapu Koko and I'm going to go for a Will-O-Wisp onto this muck, Just to burn it. Reduce that damage. Probably will knock off the Citrus Berry on the Trevenant but we don't have Protect in that slot so we've not really got an option to Protect this turn. We are going to see the Golduck switch out and the Pelipper come back in so it is going to take a Volt Switch. We do underspeed the muck, but we, oh, we miss with the Will-O-Wisp. That's a bit unfortunate. Take huge damage. Do survive though. So we've got to hope that Muck does not have um, Shadow Sneak because that will get rid of the Trevenant this next turn. Um, so what do I want to do here? I'm going to bring in the Muck of my own here. <coughs> we really need to get a Will O Wisp onto it. I 
and in comes the Gastrodon, which probably will underspeed the Trevenant, I'd imagine. Um, so, what I can do is go for an Imprison. Hmm. See, the Muck set here we've got the Terence has got on the Muck is Gunk Shot Knockoff. Um, and I think the opposing muck will probably underspeed us, so I'm just going to protect here. It's tough, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. We're probably going to get undersped by the... the Gastrodon here, which is not ideal at all. We're running out of time. I'm just going to go for another Will-O-Wisp onto the muck. We'll probably lose Trevenant here. Things are not looking good. I'm protecting the muck because I don't want the opposing muck to get a knockoff on my muck to, so we lose the berry. And the Gastrodon does underspeed us, so we will take a muddy water and we will lose Trevenant here. And we're probably going to see a knockoff. Yeah. Um. I'm going to bring in Marowak, and I'm going to go for an Imprison here, because once we can prevent the opposing Muck from going for um, a knockoff, then it makes Marowak's life a lot easier. So I'm just going to go for Imprison. I'm going to protect the Marowak this turn, because we don't have the Bomb Meringue. Ah, missing that will always turn. The second turn onto the muck has not helped us at all. Like we would have lost our citrus berry, um, but we wouldn't have taken half as much damage. So we're just going to see the gas around go for that muddy water. <sighs> Doing so much damage. It does proc our berry. Which is nice. So the knockoff, if we do see it come off. Muck. Goes for the knockoff into our muck to try and get that berry knocked off. We get the imprison off. We don't really have a lot to deal with that muck though. Hmm. We might need to try and get ourselves into a position where we are. Um, we have the Marowak left and we get a Perish Song off. So I'm just going to switch into Apple Coco here. I need to preserve the Marowak, I think. I'm just going to go for a knockoff into the Gastrodon, get rid of the item. Because killing from the damage, it feels like it might be choice specs. So we see another Muddy Water come out. It does connect with both targets. Doing huge, huge damage and gets an accuracy drop. Let's see if it is choice specs. Yeah, it is choice specs. And the rain does stop. Right, so. Hmm. That Golduck probably still has the Hydro Vortex in its arsenal. Um. What can we do here? What is my opponent going to do? I'd imagine the Protect on the Golduck's like the thing to do. So we could double into the Gastrodon here to get rid of it. Expecting a Protect from the Golduck. Because Tapakogo threatens the KO onto that slot. Oh, although the Golduck can't Protect because we've got the Imprisoned Muck here. So I'm going to go for a, a Gunk Shot. And I'm going to go for a Vault Switch with the Tapu Koko into the Golduck. We're not going to pick up the KO, I don't think, with the Vault Switch. Oh, and the Accuracy Drop really, really hurts. Because <laughs> we missed the Vault Switch. Okay. We get the gun shot, and that misses as well. And my opponent's low Accuracy move hits, so excellent. Um, and I think that's going to lock up the game for us. Yeah, critical hit on the Tapu Koko where we would have probably survived because the rain has stopped and it's not got its choice specs anymore and it leaves us with our Marowak. So things not going well at all.
Um, yeah, we're just going to take a harder vortex here. I mean, I can protect, but we've got nothing for like we can't win. We can't win. There's a there's a there's a muck in the back. Um, so I'm just going to go for a Shadowborn into the Gastrodon. We don't really have an out here. I'm going to take a Hydro Vortex, I'd imagine. Yeah. And here comes a Hydro Vortex. So we've had a few, a few series of misfortunate events, haven't we? Hmm. And it all started, it stemmed from that Will-O-Wisp miss. And to be honest, we could have brought maybe Gyarados to this match. Um, it, might, it would have, you know, benefited us. We would have had something to take advantage of the rain, threaten the muck. But then, at the same time, the Gastrodon would be a huge pain because then we wouldn't be able to utilize our waterfall or anything like that because the Storm Drain ability would pull it in. So, um... Yeah, I think we had to bring the fall that we did because of the Gastrodon. Um, and we just got a little unfortunate with misses, etc. But you can't... <sighs> Never mind. I do not want to save that battle video. Good game to my opponent, though. And we will move on. We will move on and hopefully turn this around. This track we're on. <laughs> Let's pick some good music. Let's go with Battle Royale. That's a nice one, that'll cheer us up. That'll cheer us all up. So, other news while we're waiting for our next opponent. Um, next week, we will be featuring a brand new team on the channel. I got a suggestion from one of you guys to feature some obscure Z move that we don't see very often. So I am building at the moment a team around that. We also have um, the team review for the Tapu Lele team. It is in the works and I am putting it together. So do expect that sometime soon. And um, we'll get into the other stuff later because we have our next opponent and they are running a QR code team. Um, and it consists of Mimikyu, Snorlax, Crocodile, Celesteela, Tokol, and Lilligant. Um, so we've obviously got the, the Mimikyu Snorlax, very threatening lead there um, with the Trick Room, probably Belly Drum Snorlax. We've got to think that it might be a Psych Up Mimikyu. Um, and then we've got that other call there that we saw um, Ashton win the, um, the Brazil. Uh, into Nats with the Tokol Celesteela and then a little bit different uh, from his team with the Crocodile here and the Celesteela so um, Muck's going to be really good here Politoed as well just for the weather so I might keep I might lead with Muck I think um, what do I want to lead with the Muck could bring Gyarados here for the Intimidate support Marowak's not bad actually um, I do like Marowak a lot here. I might just lead Tapu Koko, Politoed, and Marowak. Yeah, let's lock in with those four. Let's see how we get on against P Time Paradox. Hopefully, it's a bit better. Oh, and also, guys, before I forget, so NBL this week is taking a break so our battles this week we were going to be playing team jamie they won't be up until the following week so the following friday and saturday team builder on my channel match on hibiki's channel so just to make you guys all aware that i'll repeat this in another episode so you guys know what's going on but yeah nbl taking a, a week off just so everyone can kind of catch up with e3 and other things that are going on at the minute so just so you know but my opponent here is leading off with that infamous Mimikyu Snorlax lead, which we know is a deadly combination. So what we can do is go for that knockoff into the Snorlax, and should we sky drop the Mimikyu? I think we should sky drop the Mimikyu. Let's stop that trick room this turn because the Snorlax might have protect here. Mimikyu protects. We go for the sky drop. It is into the protect. And we get the knockoff into the Snorlax. Let's see what item it's holding. It's holding a choice band. And it goes for a self destruct. Oh! <laughs> it's gonna do big damage. But because of the knockoff, we manage to get through it by the skin of our teeth. 
And it does just proc our berry. So good job we went for the knockoff there. Because otherwise I think we would have lost both Pokemon. Right. So what is my opponent going to bring in now? If the Crocodile has been brought, the Crocodile's great switch now for my opponent. And there we see it. There's the big Crocodile itself. Get to see it intimidate off onto both my Pokemon. Um, so what am I going to do here? What have we got in the back? Could bring in Politoed. That might be a bad shout. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring in Politoed for the muck, and I'm just going to Volt Switch out uh, with the Tepu Koko. I really feel like I want to just chip down the, the Crocodile before I... Um, before I tackle it with a, a Dazzling Gleam or anything like that. So we see my opponent switch out the Mimikyu into the Celesteela, which is great news for ourselves. We're probably going to see an Earthquake come out here, though. I would say 100% we're going to see an Earthquake come out here. I hope that's not Scarf Crocodile. And it is Scarf Crocodile, so... Is going to get the Earthquake off. Hmm. And pick up the KO onto... Oh, I tap the cock on. Right. Hmm. We need to preserve the Marowak. I think for later in the game. For that Celesteela. So we can kind of try and concentrate all our efforts down on this Crocodile at the moment. So let's see what we can go for. Um, hmm. Let's go for a Scald onto the Crocodile and hmm, we could go for a knockoff onto it. It's probably not going to be enough to pick up the KO though. Because um, Crocodiles, I mean, Muck should be able to take at least one Earthquake. Um, but it might be better just kind of preserving it to later on in the game. Because it's going to be good against that Mimikyu as well. So let's just protect the Muck for the time being. An Earthquake from the Crocodile should take the Politoed down and proc its berry because we are holding the 50% berry on it. The Celestino doesn't threaten it too much. I mean, it could go for a, um, a Leech Seed into that slot, which isn't ideal, but let's see. If we can get a Scald Burn here, that's going to be amazing. If we get the Scald off. Oh, doing such big damage. No Burn as well. And there's a the leech seed. Oh. Right. So. Hmm. I think Polytoke could probably take one more earthquake, but we'll probably go down to the leech seed damage. Um. Hmm. I'm just gonna go for a knockoff into the Celesteela with my muck. There's not really much else I can do because I, I don't want to bring in the, the Marowak here. But we see the, the Crocodile switch out for the late game. Mimikyu come in here, so we will break the Disguise, which is nice. I don't know if we can burn through the Disguise. But there we go, we can burn through the Disguise, so that does help us out a lot. And we break the, the Disguise in the process. Celesteela goes for Elite Seed, Muck avoids because he's a boss and he wants to win this game and we get a knockoff and um, we'll knock off leftovers which does help us slightly so hmm right what are we going to do here I want to get the polytoad off the field to be honest um, as soon as possible so I don't want to be giving that Celesteela anymore. It's just the case of whether that Mimikyu goes for it. Probably will go for it. A Shadow Claw into that slot, and I don't want to switch Marowak in on that. Hmm. We 
We could double into the Mimikyu slot, and we could double into the Celesteela slot. Let's double into the Celesteela slot. Um, we have knocked it off, so we're not going to double into that. Let's go for a knockoff. No. Oh, we timed out. So, that's us just faffing around too much. And here comes the never-ending nightmare. So this will probably be into that Politoed slot. Hmm. Yeah, it's a shame. We should have gone shot into the, the Mimikyu there. And wow, we do survive. So we get the Scald off. Do we get a burn? Do we get lucky with the burn? Come on! And we get the burn! Yes! We get the rolls! And Elite Seed does come out this time into that muck. But we're just gonna use knockoff again, like fools. But we do do good damage. Hmm. I think this next turn, what I'm gonna do, because Politoed probably is gonna go down. And I want to, I want to get Muck back on the field without Leech Seed. Um, without the Leech Seed there, so I think what I'll do is switch out my Muck. It's not likely my opponent to go for a Ghost Type Attack into that slot. Um, and I'm just going to sack the Politoed. We probably will go down here, so I'll just go for a Scald there, and I'm going to switch in Marowak. But the crocodile is a big issue still. That's the that's the problem. Celesteela goes for a protect here. Mimikyu goes for a shadow claw. Is into the polytod. Which isn't brilliant. The rain does stop. So that helps Marowak out a lot. We can bring in Muck again. Right, so what can we do? What can we do? I think that Celestina might be in range from a knockoff, you know. But I'm probably better off going for a gunk shot. Oh no, the Celestina is just protected. I don't want anything taking Leech Seed. So I'm just going to go for the knockoff into Celestina and I'm going to protect my Marowak because that's going to be the focus down of that Mimikyu here. We've got to kind of hope that the knockoff is enough to take out the, the Celesteela. There's a Mimikyu Shadow Claw into the Marowak. Celesteela goes for the Leech Seed into the Muck. So yeah, here we go. This is crunch time. We need this knockoff to KO. Is it enough? It's not enough. Oh, this is annoying. No, no, no. Yeah, it's not great. Hmm. So that Celesteela is going to protect this next turn. <sighs> Not brilliant. So we can double up into the Mimikyu slot here. Um, hmm. With a Gunk Shot and a Shadow Bone. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. I mean, we could go for a Protect with Marowak to kind of... There's the Protect from the Celesteela. But there's every chance it'll fail, so... Hmm. Ugh, Gunk Shot is a terrible move. Terence, why have you got Gunk Shot? Just use Poison Jab. <laughs> like, every time we've used it today, it's done nothing. So... I expect Muck is in um, Earthquake range now. This is where we want Shadow Sneak. This is Shadow Sneak would come in very handy. Because this, I think the Crocodile is going to come back in. Just go for an Earthquake. There's no need to do anything else. And we're probably both in range. To get killed by it. Um, hmm. So 
So, I mean, one thing we could do is just protect our muck. Hope Marowak survives. And we get a Shadowborne onto the Crocodile. Then we might stand a chance to get rid of the Celesteela. So there's the Earthquake. Oh, come on, Marowak. Be bulky enough just to survive this. No. No chance. Ah. Super disappointing. Super disappointing. Hmm. And yeah, my opponent's going to be able to finish off with that. The Muck is going to go down now. We've taken too much chip damage from the Leech Seed. Um, Scoff Crocodile. Just hanging on there as well. We've been able to KO it. And you're going to see something I never normally do and just forfeit just to get through this match. And uh, we'll try and squeeze one more in. I've got to get a victory with this team before Friday. Um, it's not going well. I mean, game one, we can kind of put down to a lot of RNG things. Um, but, yes, not great. But as I was saying before, guys, so we're going to have Terrence on on Friday. So at the very least... Hopefully that'll change things up and uh, we'll be able to kind of do something other than what we're doing at the minute. Um, but next week, going into next week on more positive, uh, I feel bad saying on more positive grounds because Terence is a great guy. This team does work. It's just we're not having the best of luck with it. Um, and maybe some matchups aren't great either, but no. Um, going into next week, we're going to be using a very cool team. Um, I'm currently just finishing it off, and we're using a very unorthodox Z move as our kind of crowning jewel to the team. So that'll be really cool to play with going into next week. So do stay tuned for that. Um, and we had a really cool suggestion um, about doing a little project through the summer when the VGC season kind of calms down um, to kind of have something there between... The, the two seasons finishing and starting up again so we'll go into that in a little bit as well but we have our next opponent running a team of Garchomp, Alola Muck, Aerodactyl, Alola Marowak, Araquanid and Tapu Lele so as we've just seen in that uh, that past match um, Muck is a big big problem for this team I mean we do have in prison um, but on our Muck to kind of shut down opposing Mucks but because most muck will use poison jab, I would imagine it's not going to be as effective as it probably once was. Um, if Terence, and I'm sure he did have poison jab at one point. Um, so I think we're going to need to bring the Gyarados here, take advantage of the Gyarados. At least it gives us a way to kind of hit um, a lot of stuff on that team. We do need to be careful though with the Aerodactyl and the Tapu Lele especially. Um, so what are we going to lead with? I think... Um, hmm. Tapu Coco. Let's go. Pff, I don't want to bring Politoed because I don't want to bring the rain to boost the... Um, to boost the Araquanid on my opponent's end. Mm. Right. I'm just going to put my phone off over here because it keeps buzzing and you guys are going to hear it all the time. So we'll just turn that off. Let's concentrate on this match. Let's get a win. Hmm. So we see my opponent lead off with Aerodactyl and Garchomp, which means it's it's nice for um, a Gyarados. We are going to get the Intimidate off. We do need to be careful um, of another Scarf Ground user and that Garchomp it could be Scarfed. Um, all the signals are there that it is probably scoffed. My opponent leading with a, a flying type Pokemon. So we could just go for a Dragon Dance here, which I'm very tempted to do. I think I'm just going to go for the Dragon Dance. And, hmm. I think I'm just going to go for a Volt Switch. Because after an Intimidate, we should be able to take an Earthquake from the Garchomp. And if it's not scarfed, then we do outspeed it. So we're not going to see that unveiled yet. We see Marowak come in. So it is going to pull in that Volt Switch, stop us getting that off. And we do see a Tailwind from my opponent here.
Right, we are going to get a dragon dance off, which does help us slightly. But we're going to have to try and get around this this tailwind for a few turns before we can really take advantage of that. So, let's just protect the Gyarados this turn. Let's see what we can adjust to. Let's bring in Muck. It's going to put a lot of pressure onto the Marowak um, and the Aerodactyl. Hopefully the Marowak doesn't have Bomberang. Um, and kind of opts more for Flare Blitz, Shadow Bomb, and a filler. It's got Bomberang. We'll be able to take it, but it, it does make things a bit more difficult for ourselves. So just protect Gyarados here. And there's a Taunt coming in on the Gyarados. And an Earthquake. Wow, okay. It's not often you see Marowak carry an Earthquake. This is going to do a good amount to knock. Yeah, huge amount. Um, and because of the unnerve on the Aerodactyl, we can't take advantage of our, our berry. So I'm just going to Hydro Vortex into the, the Marowak, get rid of it, and just protect Muck here. Because I don't want it going down to another Earthquake. It's probably in Rock Slide range. From, well, it's probably not in Rock Slide range from the Aerodactyl, but you don't know what it's going to throw out. It might have stone edge so it's just a bit safer to protect it in this situation um, we do see an ice fang Gyarados thankfully avoids the ice fang and we do outspeed the Marowak in Tailwind with the and the dragon dance that we've had which is really nice so um, we could have got away with a tackle with Muck there but like I say um, the Aerodactyl was pretty free just to go for an attack into that slot so we will pick up the KR onto the Marak. This is going to make Tapu Koko's life a lot easier now. Um, and Gyarados is still a pretty big threat um, once his Tailwind runs out from my opponent's end. So I wonder what we'll see come in Garchomp. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is just protect my Gyarados to burn out this Tailwind. And I'm going to switch in the Trevenant, which should be able to take Earthquakes. Pretty comfortably. And we'll see what my opponent goes for here. I'd imagine probably an ice fan earthquake, maybe, or rock side earthquake. So there's the Ice Fang into the Trevenant this time. So my opponent getting really unlucky here with uh, those misses. And Garchomp goes for a Sword Stance. Um, here I totally expect. Um, hmm. Aerodactyl's probably going to go for a Tailwind again. I'm going to go for a Waterfall into the Garchomp. And I'm just going to go for a Trick Room with the Trevenant, which is a bit risky, because we have seen Taunt on the Aerodactyl. Uh, I'm going to go for it either way. Garchomp protects, so if we see a Tailwind here, this is, this is ideal. Get the Waterfall, just into the Protect, Aerodactyl Tailwind, brilliant. Okay. This makes things way more manageable for ourselves because we can just double into that Garchomp this next turn. The Aerodactyl's intimidated. It's not really putting on too much pressure, even with that Ice Fang. And the Electric Terrain disappears from the field. So we will be outspeeding both threats and we can just double into the Garchomp here, get rid of it. And we're targeting that because it has had that Sword Stance boost. Um, if it gets an attack off, it's going to be hitting something, probably picking up a KO on something here. So we just need to ensure that we're not allowing it to move. We might even force the switch out here from it. But whatever comes in on that slot is going to take a lot of damage uh, from Waterfall and the, the, the Horn Leech anyway. So we should be alright. This match is looking a lot better at this point than the previous two. So we get the Horn Leech off, do a bit of chip damage to the Garchomp by 25% health. Take a bit of rough skim damage. 
We will get that waterfall off, which a plus one hopefully is enough to take down this Garchomp. Oh, it's not enough. <laughs> no. Garchomp flinches though, so we get super lucky. Which is really unfortunate for my opponent there. And he does manage to hit one of those Ice Fangs. Here, I'm just going to go for a Waterfall into the Aerodactyl. And I'm just going to go for a Horn Leech, which should be enough to pick up the KO on that Garchomp. And my opponent just forfeits, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I think the flinch there really kind of locked the game for my opponent, which is really unfortunate. Um, so we did get very lucky there. Um, although saying that, you know, my opponent there would have had to have targeted, probably target into... Um, well, if you target it into the Trevenant there, just say, for instance sake, you target it into the Trevenant with a Poison Jab and picked up the KO. Then Gyarados is still around the next turn, so we still had the Waterfall to take advantage of. Um, you know, we can... Um, my opponent can stall out his own Tailwind, so the Garchomp then would underspeed the Gyarados in the remaining Trick Room turns. But then we've still got Tapu Koko to come in, um, which threatens the Aerodactyl, threatens the Garchomp. Um, so I think we're still in a pretty good position either way. The flinch wasn't great, but I think it didn't really change the outcome of that match too much. But good game to my opponent. And guys, whatever that happened in that match, the main thing is we got a win. So we eventually did it. We haven't lost all the games in preparation for Friday's episode. But I hope you've enjoyed the episode, guys. It has been a bit of an up and down one again. But um, hopefully that changes on Friday. And um, it's going to be great to have Terence on the channel. And kind of just explain the team and show us how it's played as well. So we need to see that, don't we? But, guys... If you've enjoyed the episode, as always, please leave a like on the, the, the video. It's massively appreciated. It does help the channel out a lot. Um, if you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed, do subscribe. We have a lot of things going on at the minute. And even more stuff to come in the coming weeks and months as we go into the end of the VGC season, into the next VGC season. Um, so we have School of Hard Knocks, which is, in the minute, it was a daily upload, but we're doing it on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Just to fit in other content on a Tuesday and a Thursday, we have a Battle Spot Double Series QR code on a Wednesday, MBL on a Friday and a Saturday on varying channels. We have a team review episode coming up very soon with our Tapu Lele team that we've played for the majority of this season and had very good results with, so do keep an eye out for that. And going into next week, we have a brand new team to feature on the School of Hard Knocks with some very unorthodox they move centerpiece there so that's all i'll say i'll not release anything but i think you guys are gonna enjoy it and uh i hope we have a bit more success with it than this team which i'm sure we will but i'm sure we're going to turn it around when terence is here the creator of this team on friday so do tune in for that guys it's going to be an awesome episode and terence you'll be watching this i am so sorry man we couldn't help game one game one was not our fault but game two not so good, but whatever, it doesn't matter. This is Pokemon, and as long as you guys are enjoying this, then that's the main thing. Um, so we will be back, guys, later on this afternoon with an episode of our QR Code series, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So do stick around for that. It is going to be a blast. Um, we've had a very special request from a long time ago that I got reminded of, so we're going to be featuring that on today's episode, and um, I hope you guys enjoy it. But whatever you end up doing, guys... Do take care of yourselves, have fun, but um, until later on with our QR code series, I will see you later. So until then, guys, bye-bye.